prosperous. That's the one thing is we had the freest country and the most prosperous country. We had the largest middle class and the wealthiest middle class ever. Today, the middle class is shrinking. The middle class is getting poorer. The poor are getting more numerous and the rich are getting richer under this system. And therefore, we have to understand exactly how this came about. One of the things I believe has happened is that because of our richness in this country and all the material wealth we have, as a consequence of our understanding about personal liberty and property rights and sound money, we concentrated on the material benefits and we forgot about where it was coming from. We forgot that you have to produce wealth to enjoy wealth. You for, we forgot about the fundamentals of liberty. And you say, well, if they forgot uh, 50 years ago, so why didn't we get poor? Well, it took a long time. We had so much wealth. But today, even the apparent wealth that we have in this country is based on debt. And it's, it's a big difference now. Before, it used to be based, we used to be a creditor nation. Now we owe more money than any other country ever has in the history of the world. And this is why we're in the midst of a financial crisis. And it is related to the understanding of what the role of government ought to be. The founders knew and understood that the role of the king was not what they wanted. And they knew what they wanted. They had a revolution. They wrote a constitution and warned us. If a people do, if a people do not remain moral, they will not maintain their liberties. And today we are suffering the consequence of our loss of confidence in freedom. And now we are a poorer nation. So what we have to do is once again reinstill in the hearts and minds of the American people the love of liberty and the love of, of, uh, of, of producing wealth again and not the dependency on borrowing and spending and printing press money. Woo! This loss of understanding and confidence has led us into a financial crisis. Today, uh, our deficit's running. Last month, in February, our national debt went up. $200 billion in one month. Broke all records. And that was a short month, too. <laughs> but but the talk of the other candidates and people in Washington talk about, oh, yeah, we're going to cut, and we have these automatic cuts when the Congress won't do it, and the super committee makes a super mess out of things, and they have these automatic cuts. But the automatic cuts, it's a farce. They said they're going to cut a trillion dollars. Oh, that sounds pretty good. It's a cut of a trillion dollars over 10-year proposed increase of $10 trillion. Wow. So they're going to cut a, a $10 trillion increase in the spending, cut it by $1 trillion, and they want to get excited about it. That's cutting, that's cutting $100 billion a year. And the national debt going up between $100 and $200 billion every single month, it won't hack it. You know what will hack it? It's for us to have a new president that's willing to cut the budget by $1 trillion. <laughs> Suspect. They tell you unemployment's all, not all that bad, it's 8%, which is pretty bad. 
you know, the truth is, if you measure it the way we used to and by the free market economic system, we have a closer to a 20% unemployment rate. And that is why we're hurting. But then we get the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board get on and say, well, we do have inflation. We plan to have inflation. We want some inflation, but we're going to keep it at 2%. I'll tell you what, your inflation rate, the destruction of your currency, the cost of living is going up much faster than 2%. I just came in, I saw how much gasoline costs around here. It's pretty expensive. And the whole thing is, is if you live on Wall Street and you're making millions, if not billions of dollars, what do you care whether your gasoline is three, four, five, or six dollars? It's irrelevant. But what does it mean if you're living on the margin? What if it means that you barely have enough money at the end of the month? What does it mean you have debt? This is a big increase. What if you're on a fixed income? What if you're on Social Security? Your cost of living is going up a lot faster than 2%. And that is preventable because that isn't price is going up is this consequence of the value of your dollar going down. And that's why we have to look at the monetary system and find out what to do about it.
governments in many ways reflect the attitude of the people. If the people want the entitlement system, we'll end up with entitlements. We've rewarded those members of Congress and politicians for years. Go up there, spend money, borrow the money, tie themselves over, worry about it on another day. I used to say, we can't do this, we're gonna dump the debt on the next generation. But I don't say that anymore. We are the next generation. We are facing the consequences now. That's why we have to do something about this now.
What they did was they put it in the Constitution that to go to war, it would require the support of the people and a vote of the Congress, but not the executive branch and not by the president. Just think if we would if we would have not fought one war since World War II, since that was the last time we declared war, how much wealthier this country would be. being fought and nobody knows exactly the reason as certainly the reasons that we went into these places did not exist if we did that if we had just done it for the last 10 years we would have been four trillion dollars richer we wouldn't be paying interest on that debt because that is the amount of debt that we have accumulated over the past 10 years because of the wars in the middle east so i say end the wars and bring our troops home from around Constitution to have a strong national defense. That is not a state function. And if that is the case, we, we should be prepared to defend ourselves. That is where we excel. This country can defend itself against anybody. Nobody is going to touch us. Nobody's going to invade us. And yet we have more weapons than everybody else put together. We have spend more money every year than everybody else. So it's not like we would diminish our defenses. I think the interference and the occupations and the nation building that goes on, I think it makes us less safe because you know what? A few people get a little bit annoyed with us going in their countries and dying. say yes we should be prepared we need to fight a war declare the war have the people come together have parties come together fight the wars win them and get home and quit look to the Constitution just this past week, uh, Panetta announced and was seen to be very proud of the fact that our president now is being explicit about this and he says that uh, he can get the authority from the UN and NATO. And, uh, When he was quizzed by this, he says, oh, well, we'll inform the Congress. That means we'll inform the people when they feel like it. And that is not right. That is not the rule of law. And that has to be reversed.